So here is the landscape fabric, 25 feet long by six feet wide. This is woven plastic fabric. And I stuck them down using these pins around the edge and down the middle. I put pieces of rebar, just lay them out every five feet. For each piece, what I do is tie this little piece of string right in the middle. So these are two foot pieces of rebar. Tie this string right in the middle. It's about a foot long string. And then take this washer, slide it over the top. Then what I'm gonna do is stick it in the ground, pound it down, and the washer is what the PVC pipe is going to rest on so it doesn't dig into the ground. So here's the first hoop. These are 10 foot long pieces of PVC pipe, half inch. So you can see down here, the washer is keeping the hoop itself from stabbing into the ground and getting buried. So here's all six PVC hoops installed. Pretty good amount of space underneath them that crouching down, I'm not gonna hit my head on the ceiling. Now you might be thinking that since this is PVC, it will degrade really fast when it's exposed to ultraviolet light. So one way to get around this that I found is from a channel called One Yard Revolution. He also uses PVC pipes to make hoop houses, but he covers them in white Gorilla tape. Basically just put a layer of this on the top. I didn't put any on the bottom, just the top, because I figured that's where sunlight's gonna be coming from. So I just put a, put a piece of this Gorilla tape just along the entire top part. I'm gonna do that to all of them. And hopefully that should take care of that problem. So now I'm about to add the greenhouse plastic itself. I gave it a little bit of extra room, so it's going to be about three feet wider on each side and about five feet longer on each side. So it's always better to have it a little bit bigger than you need than to be small for what you need. But before I do that, I got this string and I just tied it. It's kind of like a ridge line just to give it some extra stability so that way when one of them moves, all of them kind of help hold it steady. This makes it a lot stronger. So I just added this plastic on top of it. I use these two by fours just to hold it down so it doesn't blow away while I'm trying to work with it. And for the ends, I just kind of bunch it up, tie a string around it, and then tie that string to a piece of rebar. Did that on both ends. So next, I'll use string over the top to keep it from blowing down. So here's the final product. Now I've got the strings to hold it down. So let me show the pattern for how I have these strings on. So each string crisscrosses along the top. I tied a permanent knot here. It loops over. So I'll just go through one. It loops over. It goes right through here. Doesn't it's no knot, it just kind of loops around this existing string, which you saw back when I was putting the washers and the rebar on. That's what this string is for. So this string loops into this, comes around, and I'll walk up the other side. It comes over here, and there's a slip knot right here. So Basically, a slip knot is a knot that's strong when pulled in this direction, but if I were to pull uh, this right here, if I was to pull this, just give it a gentle tug, the whole knot will come undone. The reason for that is in case I ever need to tighten this down, I want to make sure this is easily adjustable. Like I don't want to be trying to untie a hard knot just because I'm trying to tighten this down. Because when windy conditions come, I imagine I might need to like cinch these down I'll just pull this slip knot to loosen it and then tighten it, cinch it all down even harder, and then put the slip knot back on it. So basically, this one loop here is a V shape from here, looped over there, and looped over there. And I did the exact same thing on the opposite side.
put a permanent knot here, looped over there, slip knot here. Same thing, and then I just kind of repeated that pattern all throughout for each one of these. And the cool part about this is I can pull just like that to open it up to ventilate it to get inside. So just do this on a few of these. And now it's ventilating out the extra heat and I can hop inside from here. And it is very warm. Like I just put this up and it's already like 15, 20 degrees warmer. Like I have to take off my jacket. So oh, one more thing too. So since there's, since there's extra length, length that comes out here about extra three feet or so, I folded this under like that. So it kind of goes like that as opposed to like that, which is not how you'd want it. The reason is because when it rains, the water is going to run down, run down and get up in there and cool in there and get nasty. Next time you want to take it off, it'll probably spill on you. So the important thing is to flip it over and roll it the opposite way. And I did that for all along here. So now, when it's like that, if water runs down, it will just hit the ground. Four to six weeks later. So here's what the mini caterpillar turner looks like with all of these seedling trays growing inside of it. Cherry tomatoes, sakura, and black cherry. And then full-size tomatoes, brandy wine, spaghetti squash, bush beans, pole beans, cabbage, dragoon lettuce, corn, some salanova lettuce, and I have actually two rows. Another one on the other side over there. I open up the sides or close the sides depending on the temperature. If it's getting really warm, I'll leave it open all the time. And if it's looking like there's going to be a frost, I'll close down this layer and I'll also close down this layer. But while it's warm out, I usually leave this open and leave this closed to keep the insects out. 